Welcome, everybody, to the Dave Scott My Radio program. We're going to start in about one minute. I'm here with our very special guest. Do not miss this episode. We're here until noon or thereabouts here in Greeley, Colorado. So I uh, get the actual show going. But welcome all our Facebook listeners. I will be with you in a moment. <clears throat> We're just gonna stop that. Cold? <laughs> it's, just, it's just the way we roll. Um, let me make sure these are. Uh, I'm also gonna be turning both these mics on. So, pardon me, sorry. Uh, Actually, yeah, you could. That's my program. That's my mic. Ready? Begin. <laughs> Music's actually playing. It's um Okay. It's all the way down. No. Okay. <laughs> We're not that professional, right? Well, there goes the neighborhood. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the Dave's Gone Light radio program of the stream with me, yours truly, Dave Lefkowitz, and, of course, my darling and adorable wife, Joyce. No, that's not. That's not. That's, 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 that's waving off camera as we do our Facebook feed because we're very excited today. We have actually a very special guest live with us in the neighborhood on this Saturday morning, February 10th, 2018. And before before we even welcome, I do want to say hi to all the, 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 the Facebook folks who are joining us, including John and Daniel. Oh, good morning, John DeMarco and Matt and David and Glynis and Cheryl and Joseph and a couple of people who logged on a little earlier. I can't see them anymore, but please welcome to the neighborhood. Send me your comments right through here on Facebook. If we get a chance, we'll read them. But most importantly, we're calling this episode Mic Drop. <laughs> visual pun there, Mic Drop. Because the person <laughs> right next to me, his name is Mike. He's Mike Peters, the author of a book called The Cornfield. Just came out. It's from Greeley Tribune. What is the actual press on this? Yes, it is a Greeley Tribune. Greeley Tribune Press has put this book out about his early years as a reporter here in Colorado for the Trib. He's also known to Joyce. With beloved, Joyce. beloved from his cup yeah. blog and <laughs> say it. Oh yeah, um, beloved from a column that we do or that we look at from the Greeley Tribune here every week. Because if you know, if you've listened to thank you, uh, <laughs> the Dave's gone by over the past couple of years, you've known. That one thing that saves us me a lot of work from trying to create something <laughs> from scratch is grabbing things from other places and stealing them. So <laughs> you credit Mike. I do credit them, but I still steal the material because there's two different columns in the Greeley Tribune. And David, you enact it. You enact I, it. I reenact it. Yes, you, you it. bring it to a theatrical presence. Yeah. I do. I, I believe that yeah, I do. Yeah, you, you, yeah. you yeah. perform it. You perform his work. I do. I, yeah. I, 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 I think Oscar worthy, in fact. Uh, no. <laughs> if you had better lines to, to speak, they might be Oscar worthy. Right? Well, you're the one who's writing the lines, I know, bro. That's what I mean. yeah. yeah. Mike Peters. Did I mention his name is Mike Peters? Yes. yes Good. He well, he is Mike Peters. And he has been compiling. Now, is it just the 100 years ago, or are you also responsible for Coplog? The Coplog today, I don't. When I first came to the Tribune 45 years ago, uh, they did a daily police log. I wow. go every morning over to the police station to copy off their overnight shift and all the things and then put it in every day in the paper. Then as things got busier, we extend it to once a week, and that's what they're doing now. But the the joy of it, and one of the reasons that we do uh, a mix of the cop log and the... Uh, Greeley Crimes Greeley at All Times. 100 years ago. We yeah. call our segment Greeley Crimes at All Times. We've been doing it every week. The... But the joy of it is that, at least in recent times, the cop log yeah. was pulling out the goofiest, funniest, zany yes. thing. Did it start that way, or did it start as, these are just the crimes of Greeley? This is a book that John Seelmeyer and I put out. Awesome. In 1977, I think it was, something like that. Um, 
of the best of the police officers <laughs> called Kirk Colicop. It was yeah. illustrated by Alan Wilkes, who was an mm -hmm. artist for the Tribune. Uh -huh. And it has the craziest thing. So the person reported sitting on the curb, reading in the dark. The officer told men to move on. The report of a man walking in the street, swinging his cane at passing cars. <laughs> that would be me. You know, Mike, not like a lot has changed. Apparently, That's Mike... We also, so in Greeley, there's 8th and 8th now is the vortex of a lot of stuff. Oh, yeah. So we noticed there's like also regional um, regional things. Like there's a lot of reporting about hobos from, you know, or chickens, chicken That's stealing. Right. And then a lot of stuff now, 8th and 8th, about people wandering the streets doing, like yelling at cars as well. So it's really uh, timely. And most yeah. of those are about me. Yeah. <laughs> but so even they back play in, a, a yeah. heavy role in this. Uh, back then, now today, I'm sure. See? <laughs> yeah. I just I, I love the idea that it wasn't recent that it would because even when you first started doing it, you were looking for the weirder the humor. Goofier things. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Which you, is wonderful. Um David's asking so you yeah. don't you don't do anything what we find is you don't do anything that's like your book is about a serious event, the cornfield. Yes. yes. That's a whole other thing, but you don't do anything that's very um tragic, except sometimes we wonder the follow up, you know. Yeah. Do you ever learn the follow-up? Yes, I'm doing one, working on one right now of a murder in Greeley ten years ago Ooh. that uh, got national attention, and the I'm working on the tenth anniversary story for the Tribune. Is that the uh, nursing student? Yes. Whoa! I work with nurses. Yeah, that was well, awful. No, no, this 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 was another one. I'm sorry. Oh, oh that, this is beside the nursing this, student that I killed. What, what was this? <laughs> this was a, a police officer's wife who was killed by another police officer's wife. Uh, wow. Oh, he killed the other officer. She killed the other officer's wife. She's now serving life in prison. Ooh. And, uh, without parole. So, mm -hmm. why follow up? Was there another angle? It's to 10 this? year anniversary. Oh, okay. Oh. So, Happy death anniversary yeah. to her. No, but, oh. I sent a letter to the, the woman who did it in prison to see if she wants to talk about it. Um, and would I, you I, go I, to I prison, it. Mike? You would go to prison and well, talk I've done to them? before. But in this case, probably I'm, I'm just asking her to write back because I don't have time. When I did this book, yeah. the man who was arrested for this murder, I sent him a letter and said, would you like to talk about yeah. how you feel on this? And he wrote back and said, not without you paying me. So I didn't go. Whoa. Well, Is, that Is that common? Is that common where people ask you to pay them for yes. stuff? Yes. And in this case, he wrote me a letter just last week about the book telling me he'd like me to come down and interview him now. For free. So I, for free. So mm -hmm. I'll probably tell him if you'll pay me, I'll go down there. <laughs> <laughs> now, what do you say to people who would look at maybe a book like this and you're going to talk to folks in prison and people who are guilty of these horrible mm -hmm. crimes and would say you're glorifying them? Why don't you mm -hmm. just let them rot in prison? Why give them even a voice? Mm -hmm. I think everybody should have a voice, although in this case, he his voice came on a witness stand. Uh, Let me explain the cornfield. Yeah, please, please, yeah, yeah, please do give context. Four years ago, a woman named Mary Pierce was working in the 7-Eleven store. She mm. just graduated from UNC, mm. was uh, a late recruit into the Air Force, and until she went in the Air Force, she was just filling in at UNC. A woman yeah. asked her to fill in a night shift for her in August of 1977. Mm. She was kidnapped, and police searched for her found her body two days later in a cornfield. Uh, uh, it's, it's in Greeley, Mike? It was the Greeley. worst Fritzler maze ever. Oh, God. <laughs> God. Is, um, Which 7-Eleven is it? Do you, the is one it? that was downtown. It's now a liquor store. Cross Street from KFK Radio. Uh, oh, yeah. Wow. And, yeah. and the cornfield, is. we just moved out to West Greeley, and we live just a mile from the cornfield now. Is that what made now. you interested in the case? Well, no. The case... On the night that she was kidnapped, I was in a ride along with the police on a big drug bust. Oh. And we heard three beeps come over the radio saying a clerk is missing in the 7 Eleven store. Oh. They couldn't go in there because they were on, on this big drug bust. But I followed her from that time on. I was there when her body was found. I was there when they uh, announced they found the guy 33 years later. That was the thing, yeah. Wow. And, uh, they called the psychic in on the case. And there's wow. several chapters in here about the psychic and what he found in this case. 
and I wanna, two other please. kids. Mike, you seem like such a lovely man, but you were surrounded by such gruesome. You're like, oh yeah, then they found the body in a cornfield. How do you? How did you? I know a, a little bit about your training, you know, and then your time at UNC. But how did you get attracted to this kind of uh, death and dark side of life? Well, right? UNC I mean, prepares you no, for that. No, no, but I mean, no, but no, but that's it. Don't well, you think I, like that's it? Yeah. When I went to the Tribune, I didn't know it'd be covered, please. Yeah. They, they hired me out of the clear blue sky. Yeah. Actually, they hired me and said, don't tell anybody you've been hired because we haven't fired the guy you're replacing yet. Uh -huh. Oh. <laughs> Okay. So, right awkward, the awkward. When I came to the Tribune, they gave me the police beat. They put me by a window because they didn't want to buy a police radio. So every time I heard a siren out the window, I had to call oh the police and run out what was going on. <laughs> I like to write very much. Yeah. And so this put me in touch with what was going on in, in Greeley. Yeah. And what handling this type of thing. Um, in, in the cornfield, well, I'll tell you something. Yeah, yeah. Please, please, please. yeah, yeah. A year after she was found, they had, they had two two brothers they had for suspects, but no arrest because they couldn't mm. pin them to the, to the scene exactly. But they called in a psychic, and I got a call, anonymous call. The cops were bringing in a psychic on the Mary Pierce case. Click. So I called the DA, and he said, you need to come over here. So I went over the DA's office, and there was Eesh. the DA and the sheriff and the police chief. And they said, we have called in a psychic because we... This guy is it's worth cold, some yeah. good things. And it's only going to cost us $100. Two other departments are using him, too. Wow. And um, if you write anything about it, he won't come. He doesn't want publicity. So if you can go and write something now, he won't come. And we'll just say, wow. hey, we're, we're not getting the hot psychic. Or you can keep quiet, and you can have the whole story after he's done. Of course. <laughs> and of course. Right. Like, duh. Yeah, yeah. And what happened during that? I knew they had him out there in the cornfield. I oh. just wanted to see what he looked like. So I wasn't going to stop or anything. I just drove past. Mm -hmm. He was talking to the cops and he stopped. Uh -oh. and said, a newspaper reporter knows I'm here. <laughs> but he won't do a story yet. And the cops looked up and saw me drive by right at that moment. So, Mike, why can't he pick the lotto numbers? Did you ask him what lotto numbers were? Come on now. You had access to lotto numbers. <laughs> Good point. He, he, spent, wow. he spent part of the day, part of the time in Lakewood on, on a homicide case. Wow. One in Fort Collins on a murder and then back to Greeley. And uh, he had great impact on those other two cases. Not so much in Greeley, except he opened the guy police's eyes that there may be three people involved, which could mean these two brothers that they thought Whoa. was the guy that was arrested. What happened on the one that was arrested? Yeah. They had no DNA when they, there was no such thing yeah. as DNA. Oh, they couldn't 77. test it, yeah. Finally, they tested it 20, 30 years later. Wow. And it hit three years after that, it hit it on the national scene. And they went down to Florida and arrested this guy. Whoa. What made them reopen the cold case in yeah, the first yeah, place? I mean, it's because, a dead 30 years. Yeah, that's a great question. They just, every once in a while, they'll assign a detective to the case. And in this case... He's looking through the, uh, yeah. the book here at the moment. Um, I'm trying to find... Sure. By the way, Mike Peters here was the author of the book, they, The Cornfield. They gave, it, yeah. they gave it to a detective at, at uh, the sheriff's office. Sure, She course. started going through the evidence. And they didn't know they had DNA samples then. Because Whoa. the original DNA samples were destroyed by CBI when they tested the blood type. Uh. So, they so they didn't have any. And her going through this huge locker of, of evidence found a little bitty tab with DNA evidence on it. Whoa. And that's how she solved it. Plus, the corn tasted really bad for yes. about three oh, years after God. that. <laughs> and Ew. it's still a cornfield out there. Was she was she buried in the cornfield, or no, was she... no? She was her family came was from New Mexico at the time. Uh, she was a uh, Air Force brat, and Whoa. both her parents had died. Her sister and brothers came out and they had a funeral here. And she's buried in the Evans Cemetery. Oh, oh wow! wow. And, uh, which I talked about it here and explained that where, where the grave is. We have a picture of it in here wow. and what what it's like out there now. So it's such good. I mean, it's such good closure for the family. You know, you yes. think like whoever's left in the family or even her. I mean, I, I like murder mysteries. You know, but they're fake a well, lot. Of them. Real, yeah. Some, but some are like some are real on the you know on TV. 
but I think it's closure because sometimes you hear when they interview the family, they say, we just don't know what happened. I think it's the closure piece they want. Yes. Yeah, yeah. you know. Was it closure for you? Oh. Was it the oh. writing the book? Oh. See, I, I was there at the beginning when, when she was found. I was there when they started the investigation 33 years later. I did a story then. When they found him, I did a story then. And I covered the trial. Wow. So, this when the trial started, or even but long before that, I was thinking about a book on this case just because it was so many yes. strange things. So I'd written part of it, huh. and then I retired, and I could finish it up. And that's what I did. So wow. just gave, I had time time to write then. And that's what well, actually, you say you're retired, and I'm a little confused about this because. <laughs> Writing this Maybe book, he doesn't aside, know what retirement, you know, full retirement. Yeah, this is retirement in the, the Trump era, essentially. This is not retirement. This is yeah. work retirement. He's also the author of compiling all yes. these uh, cop, no, this is not the cop book. Right. This is the really 100 years ago yeah. column that you also do. So so how much are you still involved in week to week at the Green yeah. Trail? I write two columns a week. <laughs> That's what, that used this to be column. a full-time job. <laughs> and Lindsay column and... Um, what's called the gnarly trombone. Yes. Right. <laughs> it is a humor column I've been writing for 45 years or so. It is, the title came in, in the old days, the Tribune. Oh, yeah. So the handwriting, This, this yeah. is the play, the Greedy Day, Greedy Tribune. Yeah. Well, there was so so Greedy's handwriting it. right across there. <laughs> cool. And a paper in Cincinnati saw that handwriting, couldn't read it, and said, we'd like to welcome a new newspaper to America, the gnarly trombone. <laughs> And when we, we found oh that, my, my wife suggested that that era would be a good title for my column. Yes, <laughs> yes. That's, 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 what you used to call my penis section. No, hey. <laughs> it, I, think, I think it's very um, catchy. It's a nice no, title. It's, yeah, yeah. Well, it's been yeah. around for 45 right. years, your column has. Yes. Yes. So uh, explain to folks what the gnarly trombone consists of <laughs> in terms of your column. What, in humor about what? Humor about the city of Greeley, mostly. And oh. I poked on it, the city and that. The city manager. Today I wrote a serious column about oh. officers being killed in the line of duty. Mm -hmm. and occasionally I'll write up a serious one just because I feel I feel yeah, like and see. Times. how do you get a, how do you get away with all the the because a lot of people don't like fun poking, you know. Some people have very fragile egos and uh, how do you because they know you and they respect you, is that how you get, you know, I they're think, like, Oh, it's I've Mike. Been so long. It's yeah. Mike's good, and yeah. The, the city manager here, yeah. Roy Otto is a great sport. When I good sense of humor. I, I always I always bring him up in something. And, and <laughs> I complained a lot about the traffic light at forty seventh Avenue and Tenth Street because if you're on forty seventh Avenue it's Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It never it's always red. Yep. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so <laughs> With every tenth friggin' yeah. When I retired, Roy Auto bought a city sign to me that they had made that said, This light never turns green thanks to Mike Peter. <laughs> oh, oh my god! I have it on my wall in my den now. So. Oh, jeez. Oh, man. But let me ask in the years of your doing, even the humor column, the, the Narnia yeah, trombone, yeah. Yeah. did you ever have a column where you find no problem and then suddenly you've got tons of yeah, blue, blue mail up, yeah. from crazy people. Yes, <laughs> I've had five death threats. We've had the police have to watch. What the house. you? Oh yeah. Uh, Were you killed? No. Nope. No, David, he's I, here. Uh, so, yeah. The uh, police have had to watch the house at times. They've had restraining orders on. Whoa. Uh, to to come what, about what? What yeah. were they so angry about? Mostly crime stories. Yeah. Which I've been for the police. And nothing. I, nothing. Wow. Really cool, but, uh, the others People yeah. Get angry. yeah and there's some so i mean there's some pretty scary stuff that happens so you think oh, sure. and people who do naughty things might be naughty people so yes. they're not you know exactly right. wow is there ever a story that you regret that you wrote or you had to retract i don't think they retract we, we haven't retracted anything um some of them are very difficult to write yeah. because it's so hard on the family at times and things like that yes i had one that um it was a murder in, out by Kersey. Oof. I was there when they covered, did a story when they found the body. I did a story when they made the arrest. I interviewed the guy in jail <gasps> twice. Then I was called for jury duty on his case. You can't go. Oh, can't, well, oh I had to go. Yeah, but you can't be on the jury. Audience. Yeah. There's a hundred of us sitting out there. And the judge said, if you have any reason why you don't think you can serve, <laughs> I raised my hand and he said, you just have to 
Yeah. Mike, is that you? <laughs> <laughs> and the DA went up and they'd look at me and talk and laugh and look at me and talk and laugh. And finally the judge said, Peters, get the hell out of here. Yeah. You can. Yeah, you can. You know, because then you're not supposed to read any um, newspaper accounts of the story. And if you wrote them, what are you supposed to do? Like, you know, you're not allowed remember. to read a story, but it doesn't mean you can't, can't write, write a story. <laughs> Could you imagine and be like, we'd like a, does anyone have any context about the crime? You'd be like, yes, they found DNA evidence on the whatever. I mean, whoa. <laughs> they happen. So well. basically, it's a good way to get out of jury duty, is what you're. It's the best way. Be a reporter for. for the, so you went on a early trip for. 40, how many years? Four, well, 40 years wow. full time, and then I retired. Technically retired. You're still writing. Yeah. Yeah. So how has Greeley changed for you in four and a half years? Wow. I mean, and how long have you been living in Greeley? Remind me again. Well, I came here in You went to school 62, here. 1962. Yeah. School, yeah. And we moved away to Eastern Colorado where I taught for two years and then came back. So we've been here about... 55 years or so. And don't you want to mention someone who's lovely in your life or um, who you met at the dorm? That's right. Right across the street here, I lived in a, in a house, an apartment building. I lived on the front porch that was glassed in. That was aye, aye, aye. <laughs> yeah. And my wife lived right across the street. Oh. Uh, we got married in 67, 50 years ago. That's awesome. Uh, and uh, she she taught, she's retired from Greeley Central. Nice. Teacher. And we just have a wonderful time. Does she correct your columns? <laughs> I her, I her read my columns. She did this one this week. A couple things that she needed to correct. She does a good job at that. Does she ever give you ideas for your gnarly trombone? Yeah. What's her favorite gnarly trombone that you ever wrote? Oh my gosh. Or one or two. That's hard to pick. I know, I That's know. So hard for to all pick. your babies. Yeah. But there's got to be one or two that you feel really nasty. A lot of people feel the first one. Or, or something maybe super silly, or maybe something super, you know. I, I'm drawing a blank right now. I'm okay. sorry, but it's just. I mean, David, forty something years. I mean, you know. Yeah, well, true. Had fifty of them a year for oh forty five years. So there's been a few okay, well, what about your favorite uh, cop log items or hundred years ago items? Ones that you you couldn't stop laughing. Probably I like that. Yeah. Last year I did one on Halloween week, oh. and the Halloween. And greedy a hundred years ago was crazy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, people would come out and stand on street corners to watch for the kids. The kids stole cars <laughs> and, 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 uh, and uh, porches. Oh my they god! Stole all the signs in the city. In 1916. <laughs> yes. Wow. Um, and police chief in 1916 made an order that anybody could arrest a kid on the street for wow. the police station just to cover it. So, that and we think that kids crazy. get crazy on Halloween oh. today. Yeah? And Fourth of July too. I did the one on the Fourth of July, and it said uh, kids can shoot guns, but they have to shoot them in the air, oh, and they can use explosives, but not, nothing larger than a stick of dynamite. Wow! <laughs> so, well, we love we love all your the stuff you've written about. We have a theme about hobos, oh, yeah. and then um, then also chickens. So we like David used to read the story and say, "Is this current? You know, Greeley cry, you know, Greeley, you know, current times." Or is it really old times, you know? And the hobos and chickens one could have been either way. They go either way about lost chickens and yeah. I tried to, oh, sorry. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I would try to fool her. Yes. But invariably, when somebody received the call, or the police department received the phone call, you already knew it was like No, but the chicken part was the, the chicken. Were, the yeah. chickens really were probably the main, the main. Uh, piece, However, beating yeah. up hobos continues to this day. Which well, but, or the other thing we found were a lot of people who, um, would hallucinate or think people were in their homes or yeah. think, you know, attacking squirrels. Those were big, like, you know, um, I see a squirrel on, on my lawn. He looks suspicious. You know, those kind of strange uh, animals. Al alcohol. Yeah, yeah yes. <laughs> everything in Colorado was dry and ah. those evil people in Wyoming were shipping stuff. Wow. <laughs> Sneaking it in. Through the squirrels and the chickens, yeah. I think. <laughs> well, what, what is fun about that column is that I have the original papers at home. Oh. They're in bound editions. And You're I just kidding. Those old yellow pages a uh, hundred years ago. And can, you know, and Mike, we thought you were sitting in like Michener Library with microfiche, go, going through microfiche. That's what we imagined, right? That was our. Well, back in the day when you had to do your columns, let's say 30, yeah. 40 years ago, so you would physically come to the trip offices, type in a typewriter, yes. and then would yes. you sit with a typesetter or there'd be wax and oil? Yeah. What was the deal? You write your story, and then we. Pass it on to the city desk, which was the city editor. Right. 
they would read it and proof it, make sure if they had any questions or if they needed mm -hmm. to make changes, then it would go back to the press room and the typesetter. Mm -hmm. Those would type and set type yeah. to be printed for the story. Up until now, do you, now that you have a computer and now that do you like it better mm -hmm. or do you kind of miss? I miss the old days somewhat, but it's so much faster. Now. Oh, yes. And you can, for instance, the shutdown of the government. I mean, we couldn't have yes. done, we couldn't have covered that huh. because it was late at night, and so it would be a day yes. late. On this one, they had it in the next morning's paper. So the time, the timing element, it's That's a quicker right. turnaround. Yeah. And there's so much going on today. Yeah. It's, it's hard to keep up with everything. Do you think you'd ever do like um, a blog or like WordPress or make your own website, or do you? I'm not that computer savvy. Mm -hmm. That's what my wife handles. <laughs> <laughs> she does so a good job. Maybe that. more books. I think you're doing the second, third. You're going to start doing a say I have a series of book feeling. Yeah. Well, I, I did a book uh, called 76 Gnarly Trombones, which is what <laughs> Yeah. And they've asked probably if I could do that again. So I'll probably do that oh, this summer. Maybe. Nice. Oh, yeah. that. Um, and do you think this will become... A series like there'll be a really 1918s. So. Yes. Uh, and actually, you've done this so long. How about going backwards and ah. really 1916, 15, 12? I didn't do it before I retired. So, oh. Oh. But the, what is nice about this book is that I love my wife that. scanned the ad advertisements. And it's so we've awesome. Got the original advertisements from 100 years old. Yes. Also. So awesome. It is really neat. And by the way, um, tell people, please, how they can get it. Yes, how they can order your book. This book, as well as your both Both books are available on Amazon. Cool. Uh, this is at the Tribune. This is just in its third printing and will be available at the wow. Tribune on Monday. And you can also get them at the. Uh, so, Mike, I also I, I write as well, but getting a cover to look good is a hard part. I love your cover. Oh, so, who you. designed your cover? Did you? Well, I told him what I wanted. Uh, the the, the cornfield, yeah. And I couldn't believe it. It was exactly what I wanted. It should, it really looks it looks beautiful, yeah. but also a little ominous. Yes, yeah, it's got yeah. a little ominous a feeling. Of, yeah. Oh, it's the original cornfield. It's a real cornfield. <gasps> this this last year. But wow. The corn that was in the field then. Look at that. Now the, the cool thing is, you say this is now already in its third printing. So how many did they do of the first printing? Um, the second, and then already wow three. I, this I will mean, probably make six or seven hundred copies. <laughs> You know, in this day and age, that's pretty darn yeah. good. And it's selling very well on Amazon also. Is there a Kindle? Yes, there uh, is also a Kindle. And do you do do you do book signings? Because you're, yes. yeah, that's what I was done, thinking. Done yeah, several book signings. And it's yeah. been great because the cops that work for Case have come up there and I talked to them. I talked to one man who said who was the coroner in the case. Oh, and, wow. And he said, did you know what happened in the trial? And I said, well, I was there. And he said, well, they read from my report because they thought I was dead. I'm here. So, I can testify. Right. That's another great way to avoid jury duty. If I, I guess dead. If faking your death will get you out of jury, get you out of being called on the stand as the coroner. You know? Yeah. I wish I'd known that that was the case. That was the book, but I didn't you should. That. You should. When you assign the book to him, you should say um, to the former. <laughs> Well, wait a minute, if there's another edition, you can add an addendum, and you can yeah. add little things that you've learned that right. well, since. I had to make one change. And I said that he had, he was found guilty of second degree murder for mm -hmm. some reason, I, and even the, the, the assistant DA that handled the case yeah. missed it. He was, was first degree murder. He was convicted. Oh, wow, wow. Whoa. Big, you you were trying to be nice. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I just, but we made that correction. So. That's why. Oh, he, so that's corrected yeah. in, in the new but, version of this. And we also have... Photos in here. Oh, oh it's got I pictures. Love photos, yeah. Oh, well, I want to see a body. Ugh, David, I saw the store. That was kind of creepy. There's the, there's the scene. Wow. There. Uh, Tony Mlaznik, who was the chief investigative officer and did help a lot with this. Yeah, story. yeah. I, I said, I'm sorry, I don't have a picture of you in the book. And he said, Oh, you do. That's me right there. Oh, my God. <laughs> 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 Yeah, it's so clear, Mike. I see it. And now, how could we have missed that? Well, he's standing in a cornfield, so I guess that makes you a stalker. Oh. Uh, <laughs> stalker. Uh, that's yeah, the yeah. first bad pun of the day. <laughs> yeah. This is a nibbling of one. Isn't it? <laughs> oh, no. God. Wow. So, we've been talking with the delightful Mike Peters of still, even though he's retired, yeah. still the Grilly Tribune, yeah. the author of The Cornfield, and of course, the uh, Grilly 1917, the compilation, and still... 
the stories in the trip. Mm -hmm. of, uh, you, you are not involved with Coplog now, but no. you are involved still with Gnarly Trombone and 100 years ago. Yes. So, so do you want to hang with us? Because I, we normally do our segment called Grilly Crimes and Old Times <laughs> on those two columns. You can read from this if you want. Yeah, let's, do let's do the old one. But, and then do you want to swing around? So we no, can no, I'll, I'll talk for me. I'll just well, because yeah. the, the mic I can't, I got to do like this. Oh, that's so this okay. Way, okay. All just, right. I can stay on this side, David. All right, here we go. So this is from Quick. Call a cup. This unfortunately is not available unless at some point they reprint it. Yeah. But this goes back about 25 years, and it's the best of the Grilly Police Log, edited by Mike Peters and John Seelmeyer. So I'm just going to flip. Do you want to flip randomly, or I can do a random flip? I can do a random flip. Here we go. Um, at 3:26 a.m., woman reported renter woke her and said he was all dressed and ready to go feed the sheep. <laughs> However, yeah, however yeah. he had no sheep. <laughs> Man was taken for psychiatric <laughs> Listen, at least he was ready, dressed and ready to feed the sheep. And at least he was her renter. Let's give some credit yeah, where no, credit's absolutely. due. So yeah, yeah. do you, um what was your what is your process when you're putting a book together like this? Is it just the funniest, the weirdest we ones? Just through all past editions, and you can see the dates on here. There's oh yeah, 1977. The sheep one was from '75, I should oh, say. Oh wow! Forgive me for not um, for not adding so we that just part. Went back to the, the old tribunes and found what we thought were the funniest ones. It's hysterical. So there was a man, okay, back in 1972, yeah, who called the police station and said he was too drunk to be in a public area. <laughs> So what do you think happened here? You know what I think? Self-assessment is always healthy. <laughs> That's a good self-assessment. Good job. But not always the brightest thing to do. So what happened? I think he was arrested. He was arrested yeah, for public of investigation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so he couldn't call family, like, drive me home, please. <laughs> call the cops. Uh, oh, oh, theater. This may have been the oh, Sterling, no. I guess. Oh, no, not the Sterling Theater. Also from 1972. Theater manager reported a drunk walked in without paying for a ticket. Wow. wow. Yeah. <laughs> but there's no word. Find one with the hobo. Yeah, I'm, I'm just flipping. I'm just, or or uh, chicken. Come on, okay. David. I mean, I'm just looking at this book now. I have time to prepare. Uh, here, here's one. In Back in 1971. Yeah. I was, what was I? I was six years old. Aww. Don't, don't, don't do that one. <laughs> I don't want to hear you being six years old when I was working. Oh, oh. Yeah, no. Well, you were only 10, Mike. You were oh, doing an right. it was your internship. Right. You were doing your internship in summer camp. Reporter, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Woman reported a sound like a small child crying. Aww. Unable to find anyone. But officers did find an abandoned bicycle, which had been reported earlier. <laughs> One time what? to another. I don't know what. <laughs> what? Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Maybe the bell was was Does constantly the, do going. Do bicycles cry? I, I <laughs> if they're uh, if they're spoken too badly. No, if they're deflated. Oh, if they're we'll say again. Say that <laughs> if was, they're deflated. That's very good. That's, <laughs> yeah, I like that one. Uh, I guess I can handle bar that uh, one. That's terrible. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like yes, yeah. Mike. Live the dream, Mike. Live the dream. <laughs> this is living the dream. I, I love that. This man has met me for a half an hour, and he's like, is he always like this? Yes. Because <laughs> he does puns, too. He does puns. To an extent. Not the way. Well, gnarly trombone is, That's is like, an actual yeah, pun. Yeah. Right. But he didn't invent that. That was somebody yeah, else. Yeah, but he, he um, embraced that. He embraced it. Just <laughs> Officers responded to a home. Where someone reported a marijuana plant was growing in a flower pot. This is obviously long before. Yeah, before that the was legalization. Okay. Yeah. A 16 year old boy showed officers there were no plants in the garden area. When officers found a flower pot with marijuana, the boy said, Whoops, forgot about that one. <laughs> uh, Sorry. Yeah. Aww. I mean, I think he grew up to teach at UNC, as a matter of no. fact. Uh, I can mention names. Five-year-old child. Oh no! Was left with a babysitter. <laughs> oh no! What? What? Parents then moved out of the apartment. <laughs> <laughs> you know that you're not loved when your family leaves you. I mean, how awful! That's this, awful. This is. I'm doing all of these. Why don't you? This is the the, the, well, author, the compiler yeah. and the author to an extent. Yeah. I mean, taking these things. So so just go random and, and pick a couple and do them. 
uh, July 4th, 1973, 1 a.m., man reported his wife bit him and tried to kill him. He would, he would not file a complaint. Um, woman reported a, someone had taken a plant from her backyard. Her son had taken it for the night. Why would you take a plant for the night? I'm not sure. <laughs> 5.59 a.m. <laughs> family disturbance. Family was arguing about a dog. <laughs> <laughs> They're almost like haiku in a yeah. sense. Here we go. A woman reported her ex-husband struck her and threw her love seat out of the house. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Not without my love seat. <laughs> well, was that uh, was he working for the White House recently? Yeah. <laughs> well, Report of a peeping tom. The man lived at the house and was checking on his wife. Ah, oh, oh. creepy. That's still is that still kind of illegal? Can you spy it's, on your it's own? your own house. I don't think yeah. so. A woman reported her husband was breaking windows in their house. The man told police his wife had put love potion in his tea and he was afraid of her. <laughs> he was taken to the psychiatric ward. <laughs> <laughs> That's beautiful. Yeah. Report of a man reported his wife was throwing rocks at his house and she tore the mailbox off the wall. <laughs> These were a little bit more like aggressive, yes. huh? A lot well, of they didn't like, have TV back then. They yeah, didn't have anything to do with throwing fight. your love seat out, ripping yeah. mailboxes. Here's one at midnight. Man reported sleeping on the railroad tracks. Uh -oh. He woke up and went home. <laughs> so I love the gen the delicacy of yeah, that. Yeah, he just he woke up. up he went home. He went home. Reported yeah. men throwing paper airplanes in a restaurant. <laughs> Is that illegal? I don't know. You could take somebody's so, eye out with that. Mean, just because they call oh. the police doesn't mean it's illegal. So. That's true. Uh, you know, more. well, yeah. tell yeah. Mike. So, Mike, what about the ones where they call in and they say, you know, I'm calling in asking for police assistance, but I won't talk to Sergeant X. You know, like, isn't that? Do yeah, you think they, they have those? I know. Like regulars, today. probably. Oh, right? Only when we started doing the, it was always someone who was asking for a supervisor. Yes, they Remember always that? said I would like to speak to a supervisor. Uh, they like, never talked to the actual no, cop or yeah. the dispatcher. Yeah. Always, we want to speak to a supervisor right now. <laughs> Some of them call one o'clock only to the police chief, too. So, oh, oh that's even better. Report, report of a dog chasing ducks at the park. The dog, <laughs> was not, the dog was not chasing ducks. It went home and refused. It went into the lake and refused to come out. Oh, wow. Uh, barking dog complaint. Officer could not find barking dog. <laughs> Neighbor said the dog always stops barking when the police are called. That's a miracle. Is That's it? a yeah. miracle. All you got to do is call them once and then you stop. And the, the dog yeah. yeah. off. I'm going to call the police. Officer reported a westbound cow on 9th Street. <laughs> <laughs> Those cows on the west side. Yeah. You have to watch out for them. Yeah, yeah. Man. <laughs> a westbound cow. <laughs> She's right in for a band. <laughs> a woman asked police to watch her house as she has trouble with people who put snakes and things in her house. Oh, yeah, yeah, I would have trouble with that yes, too. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Or the or the or that shifty eyed raccoon or, or the squirrels. Those usually also. Well, here's something worse. Ten twenty four p.m. Loud screaming reported at West Lake. It's <gasps> found to be frogs croaking. Oh my God! Twenty minutes later, received second report on loud screaming. The frogs were still croaking. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! <sighs> report of the theft of a mechanical. <clears throat> mechanical hobby horse. Wow. Yeah. Chase, oh, I got that. that that's, that's sad. Pigeon taken into protective cust custody. Wait, 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 wait. Pigeon? Pigeon. Why? Why? It just, that's all it Pigeon says. taken into protective. Okay. And released huh. to Humane Society. Aww. A woman reported another woman stole her car and was holding a gun to the cat's head, threatening to shoot it if it didn't leave her house, her cat's food alone. <laughs> oh, my. And reported a pig from his backyard. Goose running loose in a motel parking lot. Oh. Muskrat trapped in a window well of her home. That happens. Yes. Three men reported stealing duck from a park. Uh, they were contacted, but they'd already returned the duck. Oh, good. Oh, that That's very good. Yeah. Good. It's lovely. It's yeah. a happy ending. And we sent them the bill. <laughs> and report, they reported on the web. She found a sheep on the third floor of an apartment house. These oh. are all animal. Yeah, I see that, yeah. I like that. That's a nice theme. That's a more gentle theme, So Mike. far, yeah. Not some of the scary stuff, yeah. woman reported someone stole her skunk. A <laughs> uh, person reported someone was trying to get into his house, and the person was scraping at the door. Officer found a 200-pound St. Bernard scratching. Oh. 
possible burglary. Officers were warned that a very large, black, vicious dog in the building. But if officers shouts down bear very loudly, the dog probably won't attack. See, that's one of the things that, one of my experiences yeah. in yeah. the Tribune. Uh, the craziest one was when the Wildlife Center opened down by Oh, Pinsley. yes, yes, and I yes. Went down to, to the interview him, the owner, and what he was doing. And he was sitting outside a cage that had a tiger in it. And he said, would you like to get in there? He said, it's completely safe. So I, and I said, of course, like stupidly I was. I went in. The tiger put his paws on my shoulders. <gasps> and he was way above me. <sighs> and then he bit me on the underarm. Bit wearing, you? Yes, bit you? I was wearing protective clothing. Uh, the guy was shouting, whatever you do, don't fall down. You know why? <laughs> because then he will maul out. you. It didn't break the skin. Oh. But it, I had a black blood on there for a month. Whoa. So it was, I've also been attacked by dogs. Oh. Uh, bitten Ooh. three times by dogs. Whoa. It's just. No, all right. It's one thing to be bitten three times by dogs. It's quite another to, to be oh, bitten by a tiger. Yes, yeah. Well, but even, yes. Yeah. I was covering a police dog story about the new police dog that yes, they yes. and one of them bit me long. Hmm. Uh, well, the officer was showing me how they search people. And things like that. Oh my lord. Yeah, well, that dog goes back to and, more training. Uh, yeah, retraining. Out of, out of Grove, uh, oh yeah, yeah. Dog, and there was a dog there with puppies and I got too close and that oh. dog bit me. So Whoa. it's just... It happens, so. Has anybody ever attacked you physically human? Thank no, God. Yeah, thank God. Yeah. Threatened, but I, yeah. yeah. Attacked, so that's good. Could it be that you have the seven uh, Dobermans and the <laughs> and you have that tiger in your in your backyard? Like, right. come on, tiger! <laughs> what are one or two of your other favorite story stories that you covered? Because it it couldn't have only been crime and death. That was and a lot. Though. Murder, one of right? my favorites is that they once found the remains of a greedy man who was killed in Vietnam. Here? Yeah. No, they found it in Vietnam. Oh. And reported missing all that time. And it had been Whoa. 30 years or so. And so they flew his wife out to uh, Hawaii to claim the body. And then they flew her to Whoa. Washington, D.C. to be buried at Arlington. Whoa. And the Tribune flew me and a photographer with her to Hawaii Whoa. to interview her and cover that scene. And then we flew to D.C. and covered the burial. Whoa. Use the whole section of the paper to do that story. Wow! One of my favorites, just because of what it involved. Yeah! Wow! Yeah. That must that's like a yeah, was, a big it was, endeavor. It was, it was very yeah. Good. So so was was that the deal that the gnarly trombone and cop log were kind of the antidote to having to cover all these huh. deep and sad, yeah, interesting, yeah, like a more fun, yeah, yeah. lighter, yeah. That's, that's a great I, question. I thought of it that way, but that's I guess. It could be. Um, you you try not to get too involved in the story, but sometimes you can't can't avoid it. Yeah. Uh, especially stories with missing kids or yeah. kids that are hurt. Those are tough to cover. Yeah. Don't tell them about our basement. <laughs> Like, no, but even since we've been here, we've seen the girl in the drain, you know, and a lot of the oh, stuff. I remember that. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, this thing in, in Eaton right now that's going on. That's two kids killed by the train. That's right. That's, I mean, you would think, terrible. Mike, yeah, like, it's, yeah. It's so hard to cover some of it. Well, actually, a family member of yours just posted on Facebook about we need arms that come down for the Eaton. Oh, the train, Is that yeah. Who, is that your wife or, or yeah, some? Probably was my wife. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have kids, do you, do you? They're what? Do you have kids? Do you yes. Have, yeah. What are they up to? What do they do? Uh, <sighs> One of them teaches in uh, at a college in in Denver. Nice. Uh, the other one's in law enforcement. Oh, so, it makes yeah. sense because probably growing up, taught you all hearing your stories, I would think, because they often say like, you know, if, if the parent's a lawyer, then the kid goes into law, or they hear it. But hearing all that stuff, I would assume your your children would be like, oh, you know, something something related to what you do. It would impress them, you know. Yeah. Plus, we have four grandchildren. Yay! And we just found out. Ooh. About a month ago, we're going to be great grandparents. That's awesome. Yeah. Because you can babysit, you can have them, and return them home. <laughs> That's why I call my son Grandpa. And, it makes <laughs> <him> <laughs> well, and 
yeah. does everybody write? So because you're a writer and your wife te- was a teacher, there's a lot of writing going on. Are, they all, writes, are they all writers? My yeah. daughter writes. So. Oh, your daughter, yeah. 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 Uh, but I probably learned my mom wrote a column for a weekly paper <gasps> when I was growing up. And my sister worked for the uh, Free Press in Colorado Springs for a while. So are you, but so were you from the Springs? I was born in Colorado Springs. Oh, wow. I went to school, high school up in Woodland Park, which is west of Colorado Whoa, Springs. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was such a small town. Then there were 13 in my graduating class. Wow. See, my, so my mom was from a small town in Pennsylvania, and it was the same thing where they would they would know everyone, and they had one bus, and they had one taxi. So when they would say, you missed the bus, you missed the bus, and if you're waiting for the taxi, the cab was out, it was out. <laughs> that was it, yeah. They knew everybody, yeah, yeah. What was your mom's column? It was just a, a family or community column that she wrote in paper in Castle Rock. Do you have any? Do you have any no, of them? No, I'm worried, See, yeah. We've got some at home. Yeah, yeah, sure. yeah. My, my wife is a genealogist, and she oh. saved everything. Yes. She teaches a genealogy class. You should so. bring that back. Well, you should, or maybe do something with your mom's columns. Yeah, the, the, that would be all. Or what you what you could construct. You know, my sister puts out a paper for her church. Wow. Every, every month, so, so you're all writers. Yeah. That Actually, makes sense. Have you also thought about, I mean, you, you've got the kids, you've got grandkids and soon to be, God willing, great grandkids and stuff, but have you thought about the compilation of all those newspapers that you have bound your columns? Is there, have you made arrangements for Oh, David's always happen? thinking, he's, so he's like, um, like Citizen Kane, like an archive, like, we you know, where do things go? He always, you know, like Michener, think of our library as Michener. So we have all Mitchner stuff. The James and Michener do, papers. So David's like, where where will your legacy of writing? That's his own dream. Well, so he's artifacts. now transferring that onto you. That's his, yeah. you know. <laughs> no, no, your notes, your pay, your original columns. The, the when they yeah. The paper, how do you have them arranged? And what maybe will he maybe he them? can't give that. Does that have direct names and stuff? Maybe he can't release it. No, it's I. The, the columns are in the old papers. That's true. Tribune. Well, yeah. They're in the old Tribune Library, so they're all there. Um, and the ones that I've done recently, of course, are in the, in the system, so there's no problem there. But, yeah. Um, well, I'm talking about back when you typed your draft. He's thinking like artifacts, like if you ever oh, had yeah. your own, like, you know, like Michener, before a novel came out, he'd jot stuff or he'd type stuff and then he'd re-edit and, they, oh, and then yeah. they post that with pictures of his life and like that kind of stuff. That's oh, David's thing. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, so have, I have all for the book. I have a file mm. that's huge with mm. all my notes from every guy. I, sit, I yeah. remember that I was I'm going to write a book on it, so I saved smart. all my notes that's from smart. the file and everything. So I have all that. Because even legally, so I wrote a book about in New York about some. I study aging too. So the closure of senior centers, how the you know policies in the in the city close senior centers. So, but it was vetted for like legal stuff. I had a lot of vetting done to it i'm sure you too people yeah. probably read over and said you know well we had our begging about yeah. 20 years ago it was a rabbi no, wedding oh, sorry. but you have to <laughs> but you have to have notes because you have to support what you're saying that's right. and that's what that's what i assume you're used to as a reporter that you have to um what is it two independent i don't know how you do it two independent um sources yeah confirming like, yeah, yeah 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 what's well, your that's why that's why when i do a cop story. Yeah, I yeah. Try to interview everyone, the suspect, everyone involved. To, wow. To get all sides of the story. Yeah. Um, but that's tough. That must be tough. It, it's not easy covering cops. Yeah. Not, so. And then to figure out, like, because my nana would say, every book, every uh, book has two, you know, two sides or two pages, mm-hmm. so you get two very differing accounts. It's like us with students, or you know, saying. Oh yeah, you know my computer, you know whatever, or you know like the the well, story about. Yeah. Here's a question: in, yeah. in overall, in in terms of percentages, in covering cops and robbers, yeah. have you found that cops are generally trustworthy and right, or the thin blue line just cuts off any idea of? No, I think the cops that I've found mm-hmm. covering duty have been very fair, mm-hmm. very good people. I've cool. found very few that I've had a problem with. So, wow. And uh, it's just a, a good thing to cover. Something else that I yeah. didn't talk about, we conduct tours of Lindbow Cemetery. Huh? And, and there's some amazing people there. Oh, know. the historical stuff, yes. right? Who, so who's in there? Yeah. Well, W.D. French is one of them. He was a man hanged in Greeley five years ago. For? Uh, he had killed his partner in a fight over a bag of flour. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, my Remember when we were fighting last week about that bag? <laughs> I came at you with a knife. I grabbed a cooler you, head for mail. You didn't see the bill from Lindgrove that I <laughs> saved a little space there, yeah? What have you? He was from Evans, and he was in the greedy jail. Oof. And those, some of those evil people from Evans came up. Hung him? Woke up the, woke up the <gasps> jailer to get the key, and he, he said, I don't have the key. The sheriff has the key. Woke up the sheriff to get the key, and he said, I don't have the key. So they broke down the door. Oh my God! It's like Leo Frank. And That's like yeah. And they hanged him right in front of the courthouse, road courthouse. Aye, aye, aye. Right there, and they took pictures, and the pictures were made in the postcards. What? That's yes. what they used to do to blacks in the south. No, but that. Ugh. And they've had a trial for him now, a mock trial, just. Yeah. People had to do this. Just uh, it wasn't really a trial in court. Yeah, just to, if he were alive, would Every he have been found guilty? Found, been found, he's been found not guilty. What? The, the guy he killed had it, had pulled a gun on him too. Now, is there also any... not guilty by reason of he's, yeah. he's defending himself? Is not, there anybody yeah. in that cemetery that is like um, artistically um, famous? Yeah, or, or not like not like is it all like because like who else is in there? Yeah. Who else is on your tour? We have uh, the circus train people. There was a circus train that uh, had a fire on it yeah. between here and Fort Collins. Yeah. They, the circus, so the show must go on, detached the train. Oh, come on! Uh, left it there and went on to their show in Denver. Must be an Amtrak. So, That's three, horrible! Three people had to go pull 11 bodies out. That's they, horrible! They buried at Lynn Grove in a huge box. And just not long ago, the uh, cemetery had the names put on. Yeah. They just learned the names oh. recently. They found them. And so the names have been added to that. That's horrible! And we've got Chief Rain in the face. Um, wait, there was what? Chief, what? Chief Rain in the face. Yeah. We, his name came up recently, and he was supposedly killed and buried in Green Grove. So I tried to find it, and there's no gravestone. Somebody, they had it one time, but it was stolen, of course, with a name like that on it. Yeah. Yeah. Chief Rain so I started face, researching yeah. it yeah. and found that he may have died. There may be another body buried in <laughs> South Dakota, I think it was. And so I called that cemetery, and the guy said, this is amazing. We don't have him here, but you're the second call I've received today about it. His great, great, great granddaughter Whoa. was trying to track him down. So I called her. Oh, my God, Mike. And to, do, to see where it stood, and she said, we haven't been able to find it. Uh -huh. And so I kept researching and finally tracked down that he had been on a reservation when he died. Yeah. But on that reservation, he went a little bit crazy and yeah. was going around pretending to scalp other people I, sleeping yeah, yeah. There. Pretending, pretending. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. they changed his name to Crazy Man Who Walks at Night. And yeah, that's yeah. why Rain in the Face wasn't found. So oh, but his, his tombstone he, was Crazy Man Who Walks at Night? No, no, no. no. not here it was Rain in the Face because that's, that's yeah. what they thought it was. But what, and was he in, is he in Greenland? We're not sure. Whoa. Uh, we know where the grave is supposedly located, but we're not sure if he's there or not. And wow. the daughter said she traced down the crazy man who walks at night, and that could be him in somewhere in South Dakota. So Actually, if, if Trump continues tweeting, he will be crazy <laughs> man who walks at night. Yeah. No, doesn't sleep at night. <laughs> yeah. But they, but that, wow. Is there anybody happy in that? Some, like, <laughs> someone who had a nice long life, was well known, and then oh, just yeah. decided to go, you know? Ben Eaton. Oh, oh he, the Eaton, guy yeah. Eaton. All right, there you go. That's a good that's one. Not, that's a happy thing. Yeah, Is was, it happy? Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> like, I don't know. He's very there, and... Oh, there's. Is he buried in Eaton Grove? I, you know. Yeah, of course. He should the, be buried, yeah. Uh, the uh, cemetery, the tours have become so big, we have to break it up into three sections because we have so many people. We, we go up and just, when we see an interesting tombstone, I go back and find the papers and the old beds. Oh, wow. And my wife researches the family and things. And do, do cemeteries keep really good records? I mean, do they? Pretty good. Yeah, because I'm wondering. We're, we're also yeah. involved in Reese Cross America, in which we put Reese on the veterans' graves. Oh, nice. At and we've so that's a little there. better record keeping. Oh, yeah, and we've we've walked the cemetery. Wow. With Chris and Bill Ruth, who she she heads it up, and we've walked and checked all the graves to Whoa. see if there's a veteran to name on. Them. So. Whoa. Uh, and just down there's a Congressional Medal of Honor winner there. Oh. And, uh, there's one in Evans Cemetery. What was odd about the one in Evans Cemetery? They had a tombstone that had sucked down to the ground. And so they 
the workman just pulled it up and remounted it. Oh my and God! And on the bottom, have Congressional Medal of Honor. Wow! Well, the there. He and the one in Greedy were both with Custer's Last Stand. Oh my goodness! Okay, they have their medals. That. So they they they're wow. I mean, still tragic stuff. I mean, Custer's last time yeah, did not yeah. go well. Yeah. But, <laughs> but it, wow! But no, they, whoa. Both, they both lived through it and both got the medals. Oh and wow! That's amazing. And they came back here to live, and then when they died, they were buried in the cemetery here. But that's happier. That's a normal yeah. life, and yeah. no, well, it's a long life, and then a good. Well, there's death. probably like three people buried there from Custer's penultimate stand. We don't read much about that one, but it was it went a little better. You you. Let him have a microphone. <laughs> yes. You know, Mike, honestly, I can't stop him. You know, I just set up the tech, and then I usually, like, if you were in here, we have um, a little, it's like it's like a 7-Eleven, not like the bad 7-Eleven oh. in your book. It's a, called Munchie Mart at the University Center, and I, I'd now be going to get him a chocolate shake, and he likes mint tea. Wow. So he has this whole, yeah, he's sometimes a bagel, you know. You leave uh, him here alone? Yeah, the yeah, yeah, he enjoys it, yeah. Although I am planning to, to get up a committee to, to put rocks on Jewish cemeteries on Hanukkah. So then they can go put little, little stones. They do have a Jewish section at the Lingo ah, Cemetery. I know that. They have rocks on the stones. Oh, you yeah. tell the people the story about wow. rocks. Wow. Yeah, they remembered that way. That's, yeah. yeah. But, but, you know, Christians get flowers. They get nice American flags. I ah, put a rock. <laughs> Every, put everybody a has, or something. I, well, we once heard a, a story of someone, someone who was either from Sweden or Norway. We never know what happened. But before they, the, this person was dying, and they said to me, before I die, I have to see the grave of my ancestors. And I don't know what that's about. So that was a custom where the person knew they were dying, but part of their process was, and I don't think they were local. Me neither. And I never got the full, I don't know what that custom well, was. Well, scoot over, basically. No, like, not yeah, scoot over. Yeah. I thought of maybe they wanted a trip to Norway. <laughs> that was oh, like, that could, yeah. We have one story of... of one of the Jewish people living here, um, who grew up knowing that the Ku Klux Klan was that. Oh God, Mike, Greeley. yeah. And the Klan would come. They didn't. There were no black people living in Greeley at that yeah. time. Yeah. And so they'd burn a cross on the Jewish oh people's Oh my God. Lawn. And he said his dad knew everybody, even with their hoods on. Oh you, my God. You? And it would, oh it would my no God. So, that's just well, back in the day they were the regular people I and they had night they put on hoods and uh, the same people you saw at the drugstore i know so, you know, so that's it's the same a, people i would invite for for drinks and tea and yeah. lunches yeah but now it's just now really is over 10 i mean over it's a city so it's over 10 yeah. and we still get over flyers 100, over a hundred thousand yeah. hundred thousand yeah, yeah. yeah and then just last week there were, were flyers yeah. posted in a couple of the buildings at unc from a neo-Nazi organization called yeah, something Europa. Yeah, it's something, I don't know. It's Identity like an, of Europa. Something, yeah. yeah. <coughs> you know, colleges, I mean, I've, I've taught at so many places. Every college has stuff, yeah. you know, and you, you get stuff. But, yeah, it's, you know, yeah, and we're but now we're much bigger. So I'm I think very surprised they gave me permission to put those flyers up. But, you know. You would never do that. <laughs> you know, Mike, I, I, I apologize for him in advance. That's not even banks anymore. Yeah, we're kind of done. But, yeah. it, but I'll tell you that if Mike's a, if he's reported on, you know, crime and funny things. I know enough crazy people. I know. He knows. You know, he's very used to, you know. Well, we have gotten used to having Mike yeah. Peters here. It's in the an, what an honor to have Mike okay. here. Yeah. And then because well, we, we, we read you, but now we see you. It was my honor. Oh, it was our honor, Mike. An honor and a pleasure, and we want to remind folks so the books, that if you yeah. want to read oh. these books by Mike Peters, including The Cornfield, that one they can't get, So, but uh, this one they can buy. <laughs> so can get some money out of it. He's selling your book, Mike. So The Cornfield, I available on Amazon and also And tell them the it's the real cornfield on the cover. Yeah, there's an actual uh, cornfield that's mentioned and talked about in the book. There's also pictures in there, including color, which is way cool. Yeah, that's okay. nice. and, and this fun book called Grilling 1917, um, Stories from 100 Years Ago. And the ago. new book, the new book. To have my well, that's not, it, when do you think that'll be available and, and done? On, on the trombones? Um, yeah, yeah. Probably yeah. mid-summer, I think. Oh, I, okay. I haven't started to work on it yet, so but all I have to do is collect old, old ones and pull in, mm. find my favorites. So. Nice. And also the, the other crime book, or is that still in the nascent? Stage the one about the ten oh this the ten year oh, that's, anniversary that's just a story that's, oh, I'm oh. Like, I'm do this ten year anniversary story so yeah but sometimes stories become books too Mike this, this you know if it, you're doing research it was on forty eight hours and oh. it was on national TV oh so, so there's things going on with it so 
So, and, and just remind everybody, when does the gnarly trombone come out? Yeah. And when does um, 100 years ago come out in the trip? Okay, Saturday mornings is the trombone. Hmm. And it's usually a humor column, although sometimes <laughs> I do a serious one. Like yes, yes. This right. yes. And then Mondays is the uh, 100 years ago. Nice. Well, I hope you keep doing all these columns for another 100 years. Oh, I do too. That would be nice. Yes, yes. So, Mike Peters, a pleasure to have you in Thank the you. neighborhood. I, I Thank have you the so clapping. Much. Thank you.